Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah today. Praise God. Father, I thank you for this word today, Lord, and I pray that you will touch us with it and that you will get us to focusing more upon you, Lord, at all times. Each and every one of us in the body of Christ, focused on you, Jesus, at the Father's right hand, completely and totally surrendered to you so that we understand exactly what you're doing Lord you said you will not leave us comfortless but you will send the comforter to us who will lead us into all truth and I thank you Jesus for doing that from the Father in Jesus name I thank you Father throw the devil down Lord and just trash him under our feet in Jesus name Amen now in the book of Daniel chapter 2 we have the story of Daniel and the king Nebuchadnezzar he has that dream and can't remember the dream and God's got him all in a tizzy and Daniel comes and, and prays and and God gives Daniel the dream and the interpretation. I'm going to pick it up at verse 28 now. I want you to just look at the word of the Lord, okay? Just listen to this. But there is a God, Daniel said, in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these and then he goes and explains what this is but the verse 28 what struck out at me what really hit me was when what shall be in the latter days okay and the reason this stood out to me is because we know today we are in the latter days. Okay, Now, we know from the scripture that prophecy is, has many meanings, many understandings, okay? Many interpretations, and like, like a dual, it can, it can be repeated over and over again, okay? That, that's what I'm talking about. Now listen, as for thee, O king, verse 29... Thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king. And that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. Now, when I say this about this image, I want you to think about Revelation 13. Okay, just keep that in mind. And after this message, go read Revelation 13. Read verse 31 again. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Now, what is this talking about? This, these are the elements these are elements from the earth gold silver brass iron clay the, these are what men strive after today isn't it gold silver and brass I mean all these these metals okay and God's using this as a symbolism to show us something here hallelujah thou sawest till that a stone haha <laughs> was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet now keep that in mind upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces then was the iron the clay the brass the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth 
This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Okay. Now he tells the dream. Okay. From verse 31. Okay. And now in verse 37, 31 through 36 is the dream. In verse 37, he's going to tell him the interpretation. Now listen. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. Little K, little K. Not capital K like Jesus is the king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron. The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Now listen to verse 44. Let me just pause right here before I read verse 44 of chapter 2 here. I want, I want to make a comment here that when you read this, you, the common interpretation by Bible scholars and pre-dispensation, you know, pre-rapture dispensationalists and and these uh, people like Hal Lindsey and these others, Grant Jeffrey, God rest his soul, and other people who have taught over the years, is that you have the head of gold is Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon, okay? And then the silver is Medo-Persia, okay, Cyrus. And then the brass is Alexander the Great, okay? Then the legs of iron is the Roman Empire, okay? And the Caesars. And then the, the feet, the ten toes, they say, is the ten nation confederacy of Europe and all this stuff, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? So if that's true, their interpretation, and that's the way it is, okay? Then Babylon Nebuchadnezzar is gone, so the head's chopped off, okay? And then Cyrus and Medo-Persia and all that, they're gone, okay? And so just lop them off there at the chest and... And then the belly and the thighs of brass just cut them off right at the knees. So the only thing left now in the world are a couple of legs from the knee down walking around, okay? Right? Actually, just the feet are left. And just, you know, like on uh, the Adams family where the little thing, you know, comes out, you know, the hand. You know, it's going like that. <laughs> so according to some people's interpretation, we have two little feet walking around the earth. This is the kingdom. But see, I don't believe that. I believe the word of the Lord speaks for itself. Listen to what it says now. And in the days of these kings, verse 44, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Okay? Now, the reason I wanted to mention about Revelation 13, and also I want to mention Revelation 17. Let me read this out of Revelation 17. Because we see clearly, we can see in verse 8, John is receiving this from the angel. And in verse 8 he says, The beast that thou sawest was, okay, was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, okay? And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, 
when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. See, in the spirit, it's a spiritual thing. Okay? These these evil entities today, they're the devil in the spiritual realm, okay, it's it's manifesting what's going on in the spirit, what you see out in the world. Okay. Now when it, it says, For as much, verse forty five of chapter two, as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces. Now listen to what it broke in pieces. This stone is the Lord Jesus. It's the gospel. Hallelujah. We have everything to be rejoicing about today. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Oh, hallelujah. See? See, Daniel is speaking of future events, and right then, right now, in his time when he wrote this, when he received it, and for all history. Hallelujah. And the Lord Jesus came, and he defeated the devil. He defeated his kingdom completely, 100%, unequivocally. Now, what does Nebuchadnezzar do? Oh, he makes it all in the natural realm, okay? Oh, I'm, this, I'm the head of gold. So he builds the big statue and sets it up, see? And today, what do you have in the world? They're, they're trying to, to build up this great big image of glorified man without the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that can ever be without the Lord Jesus Christ is death, death, death. And the Lord Jesus has set up his kingdom. It is, it is growing and growing and growing. Hallelujah! And right now he's gathering all the tares into bundles. And he's going to burn them. So if you're not one of the wheat, if you're not born anew today and filled with the Spirit of God, then you're going to be gathered into a bundle with the tares. You're a tear. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is the ruler. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He has defeated Lucifer. He's defeated all these false religions. In Christianity, Roman Catholicism, the false Protestantism, all these different ways of man. He's defeated all the kingdoms of the world, all the governments of man. In Isaiah 34, it says that the Lord our God, he has indignation on all the armies of the earth. In Isaiah 24, God said he's going to turn this world upside down. The Lord has done the work, and it's just manifesting. It's, it's manifesting more and more. As we get closer, the battles intensify. The battles against these spiritual forces and spiritual wickedness in high places, they get harder. As the battles get harder, we must remember, okay, we only go one day at a time. Hallelujah. One day at a time. One day, today, you're watching this video right now. Maybe it's five days from when it's made, or ten days, or a hundred days, or whenever. You only have to go through one day at a time. And today, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Now let us remember. To keep our focus on the Lord. If ye then be risen with Christ. Set your affection on things above. Where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. See. And know that this whole image. That man is building up. Along with the devil. This beast system. This well favored harlot. Wicked system of man. And religion and economics. And politics and all this stuff. It's, it's, it's already defeated by the Lord Jesus. 
His perfect life. His offering of Himself to the Father. He defeated the works of darkness. Hallelujah. He defeated and destroyed the works of the devil. And we're seeing it manifest more and more. Oh, hallelujah. And the devil's going to try to kill everybody on the planet. But it ain't going to work. Jesus is going to pull him up short. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray you seal this word to the heart of the listener. And Lord, I pray you let us get more revelation of your word, Lord. Because if according to people's interpretations, Lord, of this chapter 2 of Daniel, that Nebuchadnezzar is gone, so the head's chopped off, and, and all these other kingdoms, and all that are left, and two little feet walking around, that ain't much to be. Hallelujah. But Lord, we know that this wicked, vile system of man, and, and this wicked, vile, satanic system of the devil, because man has given the devil authority, because man refuses to come to you, Lord Jesus, and die to self. Therefore, he just is given all the authority to the devil. Lord, we know that you have defeated the devil. Hallelujah. We know that, that you have your foot right now on the head of the devil. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you that all we see going on in this earth, you have complete control of. Hallelujah. You've not lost control. You are in complete, 100% control of every single spiritual entity in this universe. Hallelujah. And Father God, we thank you that the trials you allow to come to our life are to perfect us, are to keep us, are to drive our roots downward so that fruit can come upward. Lord, I pray you open our hearts to understand and, and to see more clearly. Help us to keep our focus on you and draw us ever closer into your heart, O oh God, into your great and awesome purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen.